Truth is making a comeback. America's Top Stories with Lisa K. Donner. William Singer is the huckster behind a nationwide university admissions scandal that ran a pay-your-way-into-college scam. The New York Times calls Singer the Pied Piper of college admissions, who, quote, became the mastermind of an enormous, elaborate scheme carried out over years, brazenly paying off coaches and test monitors, faking exam scores, and fabricating student biographies. Prosecutors say all to help wealthy parents cheat their children's way into desirable colleges, unquote. Armed with a fancy website and sporting an upscale look and a PowerPoint, Singer's Dog and Pony Show took buckets of money from parents who wanted the prestige of having their son or daughter attend an elite American university, but without the academics or athletics to merit such placement. Joining me now from the swamp is Liberty Nation's Tim Donner to discuss the depth and breadth of this scam. Welcome to Truth TV, Tim. Thank you, Lise. Good to be here. Okay, can you start out with giving us some basic facts here? For instance, how big of a scandal is this and how much did some parents actually fork over to get their kid into Yale or USC? Well, it's a pretty wide-ranging scandal. So far, 50 people have been charged with paying Mr. Singer enormous sums of money to basically do whatever it takes to get their kids into their preferred universities. Uh, they fake tests, they fake, faked athletic credentials. Uh, Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin have gotten the most publicity because they're TV actresses, but there have also been uh, corporate executives and hedge fund managers, a university professor, chairman of a law firm who've all been snagged in this scandal. One parent, Felicity Huffman, who many people know, uh, forked over $500,000 or more, and many others paid tens of thousands of dollars in a scandal that is both shocking and yet unsurprising when we consider what wealthy parents, what wealthy elitists will do and have done over time to get their kids into the preferred universities. So there's been quite a bit of talk that the kids who won their admission to these universities are actually in the dark this whole time, that they're complete innocence. Is this really plausible? Yeah, that's a ridiculous claim, a ridiculous play, uh, claim because the evidence suggests very much otherwise. I mean, these kids were told to appear not as smart as they were so they could fake a disability and they'd get more time to take the test. They knew that proctors were taking the test for them. Uh, they sometimes participated in photos with their so-called teams, athletic teams, knowing full well that they'd never been in a boat, perhaps, and certainly never a road crew. So in at least many of these cases, if not all of them, the kids were every bit as complicit as the parents. Now, let's take a minute and look at the universities. Are there admissions people culpable in this mess? Do you think any of them will ultimately do jail time? Well, I think it's still pretty much unclear from the standpoint of the university. I mean, there's nothing yet to suggest they had any reason to go along with this. Unlike, for example, when they get a large contribution Let's say Felicity Huffman just donated a million dollars to the university. Then uh, the admissions office will know that that's a prompt for them to admit Felicity Huffman's uh, child. Uh, but I don't see a whole lot of advantage for these universities uh, to uh, admitting students that you know, they, they're not, I mean, the universities are not making any money off of this. It was Mr. Singer who was making the money and the parents who were paying the money and the kids who were going along with it to get to their preferred university. So there's nothing at least yet to suggest that the universities are culpable in this. Well, let me just uh, think out loud for a minute here. I mean, if you're going to say, uh, some kid is going to make it on the Yale lacrosse team or the Yale crew team, and you take pictures with them, and then they come to the school. Let's face it, the coach has to understand that these people aren't for real. So 
they have to be playing along with it. Well, the coaches, uh, certainly there's got to be some culpability there because they knew perfectly well that these students who were admitted via uh, Mr. Singer's uh, efforts, which will probably land him uh, a hefty amount of time in jail, that they were being sold a bill of goods, that these kids didn't know anything about crew or lacrosse, depending on the situation, but they went along with it. So I think there's some coaches who are likely to get snagged in this scandal. Yeah, and something tells me that they didn't go along with it for nothing, but we shall find that out eventually. One final question, Tim. I spoke with one parent this week whose two children worked their butts off to get into two Ivy Leagues. She was incensed. Uh, is there a chance that some of these pay-for-play kids might be booted from these schools? Well, the University of Southern California, USC, has already said that they will examine um, these cases on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the individual. Uh, there's been talk about putting asterisks on their academic records, uh, also to just immediately dismiss the students since they were admitted under false pretenses. So there's going to be action taken by the universities on this. Uh, whether that will implicate themselves in this at all, we've already talked about the coaches, uh, whether it'll in, uh, implicate the colleges or universities beyond uh, just the parents and the kids to whom I don't know what will be done, uh, we don't we don't really know yet, but there's many possible remedies for this, and I believe that a, a lot of them will be pursued by the universities who were play in this in this scandal. Thanks very much for joining us, Tim. Thank you, Lisa. That's Tim Donner from LibertyNation.com. Truth is making a comeback. Visit us at LibertyNation.com.